Bounty hunting for Star Citizen is one of the most anticipated features for the game. It's also at least partly implemented, however in a very basic way. Today I wanted to talk about the future of bounty hunting gameplay and how the mechanic may evolve over the next few quarters, what's possible and what's likely for gameplay in the midterm. We know that Cloud Imperium are working on various aspects of bounty hunting gameplay and the general core of the game, but this is mostly in our I Reckon video and we'll be talking about the possibilities and what I'm expecting to see from gameplay over, as I said, the next few quarters. The current bounty hunting gameplay loop is you have missions that you can take with lower risk targets to start with. Every so often you can take a certification mission that, when completed, will give you access to higher and higher risk targets. This is connected to the reputation system as well and based on the area of space you're in. You'll get rep with the security forces you're doing the bounty missions for and you'll get more money and a higher ranking the more missions you do with those security forces as your reputation grows. The gameplay loop is intended to be pretty blended with PvE and PvP being available. You can take bounties against players, though a lot of bounty hunters currently will actively avoid that, preferring PvE. There is a more open mission for like just killing criminals and pirates, Call to Arms, which rewards you for killing enemy ships that are not otherwise part of other missions. There is added risk for players as well, being hunted as if they are killed, they go to prison, the, the criminals there. There's a lot more coming for bounty hunting gameplay in the future, and, and this is going to be more built into the reputation system as the reputation system evolves, but Clan Imperium want the gameplay loop to be fun for both hunters and criminals involved, and the element of risk versus reward is incredibly important as more of the Death of the Spaceman mechanics start to open up. 3.15 starts to open that up with the medical gameplay. Things like surrendering, which is pretty useless in the game currently, becomes much more viable and much more important in the future because criminals may want to go, well actually, I don't want to die, I'm, I'll go to prison, maybe get a slightly lesser sentence for surrendering um, and I don't lose all my stuff that's on me. Maybe that goes into like a lockup and I can get that after I've uh, done my time in prison. And the sort of thinking is that if you just get killed by a bounty hunter, if you get killed uh, by security, well, you're actually um, your clone will be put in prison anyway, so there are incentives to surrender is the idea. The whole prison system and criminal system in game is partly to sort of give justice to players, but also um, take uh, certain players out of the game briefly while they go to prison, to have interesting player friction and gameplay where um, a player will provide a huge amount of gameplay for another player or set of players. The opening up of new star systems like Pyro are a big part of bounty hunting gameplay. This is much more of a wild west and lawless system and will be a natural home for criminals to retreat back to. You can expect to see bounty hunting missions to um, take you from Stanton into Pyro, though that might become more open to um, find a person. Find this person, go and, go and deal with them and they were last seen here and then you may have to track and find them. There are a few updates coming together to support this. Cloud Imperium have been working both on uh, scanning and radar updates for ships and FPS as well, so uh, on the on the ground, um, scanning and radar stuff, um, as well as systems that track where a character was last seen and updates would be hunters. So this can be a comoray um, seeing a, a ship, another ship or security force seeing a ship or, or, a, or a player, or and maybe they go to Grimhex and they talk to a shopkeeper and the shopkeeper reports it. To what extent we're going to have tracking and going to need to scan things, we don't 100% know yet. We know that there is some tracking involved, we know there's some scanning involved. When you find their ship, do you need to scan the ship to see who's on board? Um, if you see the character on foot, is their name above them? Probably not in the future. Um, there should be UI updates for this as well. We don't know exactly how certain things are going to be handled yet, but it's possible that players and NPCs will only have their names above their head that you see in the mobile glass if they decide to let you see them. So they might just go, yeah, it can be broadcast on, no worries. But some people might be more secretive about that, and you might have to scan them to find out who they are. And that could lead to some interesting gameplay where you scan someone and go, this guy's got a bounty on them. Or there might be certain areas like an underbelly or um, some criminal areas of a city, which you might not want to go in because, well, it's actually pretty dangerous. There may very well be restrictions on weapons and you bringing them into a city, you might be able to smuggle them in, but if you go to a more criminal area of a city, they may already be very well armed, that's a possibility. There is going to be a bounty hunter's guild effectively and being part of that 
um, and gaining reputation with them may afford you some bonuses, like being able to bring less than lethal weapons into landing zones legally. All of this together might give you some exciting gameplay and a lot of options on how to proceed. You might go, oh, this bounty that I'm going after is a crack dogfighter. They're a really good player that's um, just, yeah, I'm, there's no way I can beat them um, if they're in their ship. Well, maybe I take them out when they're eating at a station or reef supplying on the ground. This brings us on to Wanted, Dead or Alive, and Capture Cells. There is going to be less than lethal weapons, ammo and advocacy tools like a stun baton and handcuffs and things. You're going to be able to take a player or NPC that you've disabled and transport them in certain ships that have prisoner pods like the Avenger Stalker, the Anvil Hawk, the Cutlass Blue, and we've seen cargo pods in the Caterpillar that um, can carry prisoners as well, and we might see modularity on more ships or cargo on more ships that allows us to take prisoners around. We've got the down state. We've got knockout states basically in Star Citizen ready. And even the medical gameplay in 3.15, it has a down state. You can get knocked down and, well, in the future, expect to be literally taken by uh, a player um, or potentially an NPC with security forces and put in a prisoner pod. Cloud Imperium have said that you're going to be able to choose to wait to be rescued if you get put in a prisoner pod, but you could choose to probably respawn immediately and uh, you basically start your stint in prison then, but the player that has your body uh, would um, still have to deliver it for their reward, but it's a, a good gamified system to allow you to, you know, just go, yeah, I've been caught, cool, let me, let me get on with some more gameplay. That person might not take me back to anywhere for like an hour. Physical components are probably pretty important for this as well. I mean, there's so many things that are important for Star Citizen that they need to get in before the game's complete, and you sort of need everything to have all these gameplay mechanics rounded out properly but basically physicalized components mean that these components will be able to be individually targeted on your ship and individually destroyed and disabled so rather than your ship just exploding when it hits zero health it doesn't actually have a, a health pool your ship it's individually are the components that can be damaged and you blow up all the power plants that ship has no power you blow up all the engines the ship has no engines it's disabled then you might want to board that ship or non that ship up because it's got your bounty on board. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how PvE and PvP differs, but it should be enough gameplay types for all types of player, and players should be aware of who they're going after, whether it's a PvP or PvE bounty, even if it's just based on the name. It'll be interesting to see how Cloud Imperium handle that because they might try and obscure stuff because they want a lot of this stuff to be diegetic and in game and, and all that sort of stuff, but. Uh, yeah, I think it's important that we see if it's a PvP bounty, if it's a PvE bounty, just because it's important the players are aware of what gameplay they're getting into. That said, bounty hunters will have a lot more choice in their engagement than the bounties do. Criminals might be in threat of PvP all the time, but arguably anyone would be in the sort of more dangerous zones anyway. One of the more important things for bounty hunting, um, and that's really going to benefit for it, is better ship and combat balance. Um, there has been big changes to combat in the last couple of patches, and there's a lot more to do. Also, desync, poor netcode, and the general feel of combat, they all need to be in a good state. Um, this is true of most other gameplay that's coming into Star Citizen as well. It needs uh, the core things in and them all to be working well so that the rest of the gameplay loops work well. Beyond all this, there's likely to be more to do for bounty hunting further out, and uh, lots of mission types, and lots more ships, and various elements of gameplay that I haven't mentioned, but we've talked about what's realistic for them to get in the midterm and what we're likely to see, or at least what I think we're likely to see. There are some questions I'd like answered though. Will we be able to set our own bounties? I'm hoping so, so that we can go into the more Wild West areas and, well, maybe then you have orgs setting bounties on other org members in different sort of orgs and there's a bit more orc war going on. Um, how do bounty values increase? I suspect it's literally by crime detected in like sort of UEE zones and probably paid out by the security forces in that jurisdiction. But then how will jurisdictions work with criminals committing multiple crimes over multiple areas? If I've done crimes in Xi'an space, is that totally separate from doing them in UEE space? And if I'm in Pyro, well, if I go around killing people in Pyro, is that fine? Because technically there's no jurisdiction there or am I still um, gonna have um, to deal with the law if I come back to the Stanton system? Will we be able to track quantum signatures and how in-depth will tracking be? They've previously talked a little bit about tracking quantum signatures and said it might be a thing. I think it'd be cool if it is, but how's that going to work? How profitable will bounty hunting be? Um, the more complex bounties may take a huge time investment in the sort of tracking department. And 
is it going to be more opportunistic as a job role or um, is it something that you'll be able to do and actually make tons and tons of money at if you're good? Can the mechanics be exploited, I suppose, is one of the other things, but that's the sort of stuff that gets tested in QA and then in patches before it gets released properly. Uh, will players get huge bounties on them and then have a friend claim it? So that's the sort of thing I'm thinking of. Or will the punishments be a balance to help prevent that? I suspect there are dozens of what happens if questions that people have as well, and I'm interested to know what they are. Things I'd like to see ASAP in um, Alpha 3.15 or Alpha 3.16, um, I'd love to see a passive call to arms mission so i want to get rewarded for just hunting down criminal ships wherever and npcs on the ground as well that are, that are criminals so um this would encourage players to actively kill targets in missions in other areas when they see a um criminal bam you go after them because you want you want the money that they can bring i would like to see a way of confirming that you've got a kill on people that you just kill rather than people that you bring back alive because if it's wanted dead or alive bringing someone back alive is a lot harder because you have to have a ship capable of of carrying them you have to stun them and take them in you have to make sure they survive that sort of stuff but if you're just killing and taking out npcs um left right and center well i don't want to take them all back to prove that i've uh, i've taken them out uh, i want to be able to just take dna or something or is it all going to just technically be tracked on your moby glass and just the act of killing them is sort of fine I'm very happy having gamified systems for all this. I want Star Citizen to be fun. It doesn't have to be super long-winded or super complex. Gamified is fun as long as it gives me the gameplay I want, and as long as it lets me get into that gameplay without a huge amount of jumping over um, barriers and through hoops and all that jazz. Just think, every time you got interdicted, that would be really profitable. You'd want to actively go after the pirates. That would be a great gameplay. If you found a Kraken, you'd be like, I want to go after this pirate base. Just bam. Lots of bounty hunters would be hanging out in Grimhex and uh, Ribbon Station. It might be quite dangerous for them, but it might be quite lucrative for the good ones as well. There are some bounty hunting armors as well that Cloud Imperium have been working on. I think that, yes, yeah, style and skins for ships and uh, and all that sort of stuff, cool bounty hunting armors, fresher ones, newer ones, and that's all cool as well. Um, but I am looking forward to uh, the less than lethal ammo and less than lethal weapons that they've got planned for the future too. Boom! That's it for bounty hunting today. What would you like to see from bounty hunting gameplay in the midterm? Are you more of a criminal or a bounty hunter yourself? Do you prefer PvE or PvP or both? What are your worries about the gameplay here? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Some people say I shill for NordVPN, but listen to some of these comments that I just made up. I've never fed the love of a woman before, but then I got NordVPN and that didn't matter. Doctor said I'd never walk again, but then I got NordVPN. Now I've been running marathons. Also, I got robot legs around the same time. They might have helped somewhat too. Arr, I was a tone-deaf pirate, but after getting NordVPN, I'm able to play the saxophone. Go on, Zin, try and animate all of this. Click the links below to get NordVPN. It might lead you to a more fulfilling life, but more likely, it will just help protect you from the terrors of the internet. What ship are we giving away in October? It is one of the most exciting ships we've given away and one of the most popular. It's the Argo Cargo. So many people liked it, we thought we'd give one away instead of a Mercury Star Runner or a Carrack or something else. You can do fun things like fly around a planet or fly very slowly into the sun. And it also makes my top 16 ships that I liked in the ship showdown this year. Me and Zin are sort of on a holiday for a week so we had to quickly film a ship giveaway so we do have Citizen Con coming up and we might have some other things going on on the channel that will make it worth your while commenting, so do what you want. I'm not your dad. You should definitely press the join button below my videos though, and you should certainly like and subscribe and bell bother. Click on the bell, I don't know what it does, but it makes me money somehow, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Thanks very much for watching though, and I'll see you in the next one.